Hey, Julia. Hey, Shannon, happy Monday. Hey, Rev. John was in my office a couple hours ago, really glum, because he had just dropped off Aria with you all. He was feeling a little, uh, well, a little sad. Thanks. Thanks, my my gas log's a little persnickety, so hopefully I'll continue to have a fire. We'll see. Sometimes it cuts out inexplicably, but right now it feels pretty good. All right, 6.30 it is. Let's get started. Evening prayer, right to page 117. Welcome to everyone who just joined. We are page 117, evening prayer, right to. Hey, Kathy Kay, good to see you. O oh God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Hey, Lisa. Page 118 is the Fos Hilaron. Please pray with me. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm for today on the Feast of C.S. Lewis is just a short little bit of Psalm 139. That's on page 794. And we'll cant that this evening. Psalm 139, page 794. This is verses 1 through 9. Page 794, Psalm 139, the first nine verses. <clears throat> Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. All right. And our second reading this evening comes from that tiny little New Testament book of First Peter. This is chapter 1, beginning with the third verse, and as often the case, the reading out of the message.
what a God we have and how fortunate we are to have him, this father of our master Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven. And the future starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us in the future. The day is coming when you'll have it all. Life healed and whole. I know how, the, how great this makes you feel, even though you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. You never saw him, yet you loved him. You still don't see him, yet you trust him. With laughter and singing, because you kept on believing, you'll get what you're looking forward to. Total salvation. The word of the Lord. Our canticle for this evening is Canticle 11 on page 87, the third song of Isaiah. Canticle 11, page 87. When you get there, we'll read that together. All right, Canticle 11. Hey, Amy. Canticle 11, page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We'll skip ahead to page 120. <clears throat> Excuse me, page 120, the Apostles' Creed. When you get there, please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we continue on the next page, page 122, with suffrages B. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of C.S. Lewis, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. I'll read the short biography on Lewis now. 
You must make your choice, Lewis wrote in Mere Christianity. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up as a fool, spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. Lewis did not always believe this way. Born in Belfast, Northern Ireland, in November of 1898, Lewis was raised as an Anglican, but rejected Christianity during his adolescent years. After serving in World War I, he started a long academic career as a scholar in medieval and Renaissance literature at both Oxford and Cambridge universities. He also began an inner journey that led from atheism to agnosticism to theism and finally to faith in Jesus Christ. Really, a young atheist cannot guard his faith too carefully. He later wrote of his conversion in Surprised by Joy. Dangers lie in wait for him on every side. Amiable agnostics will talk cheerfully about man's search for God. To me, as I then was, they might as well have talked about the mouse's search for the cat. You must picture me all alone in that room at college, night after night, feeling, whenever my mind lifted for even a second from my work, the steady, unrelenting approach of him whom I so earnestly desired not to meet. That which I greatly feared had at last come upon me. It was 1929 when I gave in and admitted that God was God and knelt and prayed, perhaps that night the most dejected and reluctant convert in all England. <laughs> oh, boy. Lewis's conversion inaugurated a wonderful outpouring of Christian uh, writing in media, as well as varied as popular theology, children's literature, fantasy, and science fiction and correspondence on spiritual matters. In 1956, Lewis married Joy Davidman, a recent convert to Christianity. Her death four years later from cancer led him to a transforming encounter with the mystery of which he had written so eloquently before. Lewis himself died at his home in Oxford in 1963. And our collect for today. O God of searing truth and surpassing beauty, we give you thanks for C.S. Lewis, who sanctified imagination lights fires of faith in young and old alike. Surprise us also with your joy and draw us into that new and abundant life, which is ours in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our prayers for this evening begin on page 833, if you'll join me there. We'll pray prayer 64, page 833, prayer 64. This is one we have not prayed together. You may have prayed it. We just haven't prayed it here. I think it's really beautiful. Page 833, prayer 64. Please pray with me. O Almighty God, who pours out on all who desire it the spirit of grace and of supplication, deliver us when we draw near to you from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind, with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections, we may worship you in spirit and truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then on the next page, uh, page 834, we'll pray prayer 65 together. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in your Son's name, we beseech you mercifully to incline your ear to us who have now made our prayers and supplications unto you and grant that those things which we have faithfully asked according to your will may effectually be obtained to the relief of our needs and to the setting forth of your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your thanksgivings and intercessions silently, aloud, or typed in the chat box.
Amen. Page 126 is our final prayer, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. When you get there, please pray with me. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. My friends, let us bless the Lord. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, it is good to see you again. Uh, let's see, what do I know? Uh, Julia is going to take care of you with Compline this evening. Please keep Deacon Sue and her family in prayers. Her son's mother-in-law passed away of cancer, and they were celebrating her life today. Let's see, tomorrow will be worship at 6.30 here. It'll be pre-recorded because tomorrow is also the community Thanksgiving service for uh, Frankfurt's Ministerial Association and Interfaith Council as well. We're having a joint Thanksgiving service, and that'll be broadcast live from First Christian Church tomorrow evening. It'll be on cable 10 and 510, and that's at 7 o'clock, and also on First Christian's Facebook and YouTube channels. So pre-recorded evening prayer for us tomorrow at 6.30, live worship at 7, uh, streaming virtually. There's no in-person worship there. I'll be doing that. So at any rate, hope you are well. You are in my thoughts and prayers, and I'll see you tomorrow.